It's become a tradition here in this church. And on St. Patty's Day, the primary point of activity That has nothing to do with it. I just wanted to hear how it sounded. Thank you. <laughs> I thought that was lovely. But it's a tribute. It's a tribute that came out of, as I want to say, Durham. One of the uh, Unity group out there had a friend who dedicated this to the Unity Church a long time ago, 1989. This it came into my attention about 1998, something like that. We've been doing it here for a good long while. So I invite you to listen up. He's here again. Louis, the enlightened leprechaun. Lend him your ear. He's got something to say that it would be good for each of us to consider, to consider deeply to the point where we take it into our minds and hearts and let it shape our days and make the love in our hearts express in beautiful fashion. From Louis, the enlightened leprechaun. Begosh, begosh and begard, it's such a blessing tis to be talking with you like this. Indeed, it warms the very cockles of me heart for there's so much pent up inside me yearning to be shared. But there's a sadness too. I, what I got to be saying is hard, so I may as well be right into it. High time tis for we, we leprechauns to come out of our places neath the shamrocks and the toadstools where we do our work for the world and put an end to a might of a myth that ye humans have. Tis the myth of luck. Heaven knows you've been carrying that bit of blarney with you for centuries, and it would be best to get rid of it once and for all. Don't you know that each time one of you says good luck to the other, wishing for some chance occurrence, some chance occurrence of fortune to befall your friend, or a loved one, or whoever, a leprechaun sheds a great green tear. Don't you know that each time one of you thanks your lucky stars, or hopes for a lucky day, or searches for the four-leaf clover, or clings to a shiny good luck coin, you're subscribing in your mind to some kind of random magic being at work in this universe. You're holding in your consciousness to something that simply does not exist, at least in the silly way you perceive it. And when you do that, every one of us, we leprechauns, weep. Wake up. Wake up, me fair friends. Wake up to what's true in this universe. Wake up to knowing that there's no such thing as luck. And when you persist in calling it luck, even in this wondrous new age, for shame, for shame. It's but a momentary glimmer. That's what you're seeing. That's what you're experiencing, a momentary glimmer of something far more glorious, the endless movement of God's Holy Spirit all around you. Not by accident, but by grand design. And tis nothing you can do nor say it will entice it any closer, for tis already the ever-present, intimate, constant of your lives, would ye but know it in your heart and feel it in the core of your being. And how am I to be doing that, I can hear you asking. Indeed, you might well ask, for tis the most important question you could ever bear to your soul. Why? It would be so good if I could but tell you what to do for how you human beings love something to do. But the truth is, and here's where the going gets tricky, that making the switch from holding to the capriciousness of luck to resting in bliss 
as a perpetual captive of his spirit involves not so much something you do, but something you stop doing. I. It means you need to stop. To stop believing in everything you heretofore have been given to believe. For secondhand believing keeps you from firsthand experiencing. Stop adding to existence with thoughts you conjure up in your mind. For it is perfect just the way it is before you start your meddling with it. Stop looking for other things to do to bring you happiness. For looking points you towards the future. And happiness becomes clearly obvious when you're standing at your place in the present. And then, soon enough, sure as the showers of March give the glistening glow of emeralds to the hills of Erin, you will stop altogether for you will find there is no ye at all. Only he, loving us, leading us, and shedding his grace over all of us. And just like our great common friend, Jesus of McNazareth, you will be saying with every breath you breathe, I, I and me Father are one. And knowing this is all the luck you'll ever be needing. The Father in you, the universe in you are one. It's all the same stuff. Amen. And all at once, all it desires is for you to reach out and embrace it, experiencing the friendship, the receptivity of it. It just wants you to know it loves you. Ah, and if that's the case, then St. Patty's Day is sure a happy one. And if it's not the case, don't worry about it. God is ever so persistent. And that bang on the head will not stop until you get it. So if you join me this year, maybe a little more head banging and maybe a little less, who knows. But by the time we roll around to this time next year, I invite you to consider the grace of living in the constant acknowledgement of the grace of the God that's upon you right here, right now, that doesn't require any luck to be your experience. This requires an open mind and a heart that wants to reach out and touch the grace of being one with the Grand One. Okay? Okay. Thank you. I do my best.